Alfie the Apostrophe by Moira Rose Donahue, illustrated by Joanne Adenolfi. Alfie curled his mashed potatoes around on his plate and wished he could disappear. The annual punctuation mark talent show auditions were tomorrow and he didn't want to try out. But Alfie, said his father, you worked so hard on your contraction tricks all summer long. And what you've been doing with possessives lately has been magic, said his mother. His parents didn't understand. An apostrophe couldn't compete with question marks and exclamation points in a talent show. Besides, said his father, you have to uphold the noble apostrophe tradition. After all, we're descended from the ancient Greeks. At least our name is Greek. What does it mean? Look it up, said his father. Alfie looked up apostrophe in the dictionary. It came from the Greek word meaning turning away. As in turning away letters to make contractions, he thought. Cool. Maybe he should try out. But first, he'd better practice some more. In his bedroom, he set up his first trick. But he couldn't find his magic wand. Then he saw it on top of a pile of half-chewed dog toys. Alfie held his wand under the light to inspect it. Only a few tooth marks. It should still work. He put on his white magician's gloves and went through his routine. But when he got to his final trick, he couldn't do it. He couldn't remember the magic words. Alfie, it's past your bedtime, called his mother. He knew he had to stop. He could only hope the trick would work tomorrow. After science the next day, Alfie's teacher led all the punctuation marks to the auditorium. The director stood on the stage and spoke into his megaphone. Welcome! I am the very talented stage and screen star Bud Asterisk and I'm going to lead your talent show this year. I also work at the Astor School of Dance, where I teach one of your classmates, Hiram the Hyphen. Everyone looked at Hiram, who was turning red and probably wishing he could dash away. Well, let's get started. Question marks, why don't you go first? Several question marks go up and hopped onto the stage. Why did the cow cross the road? I don't know. Why? So she could get to the movie. Everyone laughed out loud. The question marks told jokes and riddles until the director yelled, Cut! That was great! Who wants to go next? We do, we do! yelled a group of exclamation points dressed in cheerleader costumes. They ran on stage. Go team, go fight, team fight, win team, win! They yelled. Then they did flips in the air and made a pyramid. Finally, they beat their pom-poms together and yelled, Yeah! 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 The class applauded. Alfie sank deeper into his seat. He didn't stand a chance. Then the parentheses took their places for double Dutch jump rope with some commas and quotation marks. But a comma fell and the ropes twisted together. Cut! yelled Mr. Asterisk. Let's move on while they untangle themselves. Who's next? A group of periods and hyphens ran on stage. They called themselves the Dots and Dashes, and they performed a short tap dance. At the end, they tapped out SOS and Morse code. Boring, thought Alfie. But Mr. Asterisk yelled, Stella! Of course, Hiram was his star pupil. Well, said Mr. Asterisk, when the periods and hyphens were finished, that's a wrap. I'll post the list of winners tomorrow. Alfie raised his hand. Excuse me, he said. I haven't gone yet. Mr. Asterisk frowned in his direction. Sorry, kid, I already called the commas. But I'm not a comma. I'm an apostrophe, said Alfie. A what? 
an apostrophe. It's Greek. Hey, it's all Greek to me. Get up there and show me what you've got. Alfie approached the stage, carrying his folded up table and magic props. Look, it's the apostrophe, yelled one of the quotation marks. Aren't you missing something? yelled his twin. Alfie ignored them. Quotation marks were often filled with hot air, but he felt like it was snowing inside his tummy, the way it did when he was about to cry. He carefully unfolded his table and covered it with a black cloth. What are you going to do? asked the question mark. You'll see, he said. Alfie pulled out the words can and not and placed them on the table. He covered them with a red scarf, said his magic words and tapped three times with his magic wand. Slowly, he lifted the scarf, hoping the trick had worked. Two letters had disappeared and the contraction can't appeared. The audience oohed and ahed. Alfie felt the snowflakes in his tummy melt. The next trick was harder because he had to transform letters. This time he took Will and Not and covered them with a yellow scarf. He said his magic words and tapped the top of the scarf. Poof! A puff of purple smoke whooshed up and he lifted the scarf. He had changed Will and Not into Won't. The audience broke into applause. Now for my last trick. Could I have a volunteer from the audience? Alfie asked. Several marks raised their hands. He picked a period named Dot because she had been first. Dot stepped onto the stage. Stand right there, said Alfie, pointing to one side of the stage. Then he showed the audience a doll. His possessive trick was the hardest and hadn't worked last night. Alfie felt it start to snow in his tummy again. Abra, Kadabra, that wasn't right. Hocus, Pocus, that wasn't right either. What were the words? He looked out at the audience. The spotlights were blinding. Lights! That was it! Alfie chanted, when clouds have gone and lights have shone, watch this doll become Dot's own. A huge cloud of black smoke covered the stage. Then it shimmered and twinkled like a thousand fireflies and faded away. When the smoke cleared, the doll had disappeared. Alfie pointed to Dot. She held up the doll. Dot's doll, he said and took a deep bow. The audience cheered and Alfie the Apostrophe became the show's shining star. Alfie the Apostrophe by Moira Rose Donahue, illustrated by Joanne Adenolfi.